that's a good time to go for a walk. I'm in San Sebastian, just leaving my alberg. It's 7 a.m., uh, my first day on the Camino del Norte. I'm just heading to the train station where I'm going to be catching the train up to Daya. I will be hiking with a little day pack, so it should make it very easy. I left my backpack in the hostel because I'll be returning right back. It's a beautiful view if you look down here the river. On one side of this sign it's France and on the other it's Spain. We finally made it out of Irun. We've made it through the whole city and now it's becoming the real thing. I have some horses. From Iruna it was pretty much all uphill. You might be able to make out the little horses we just passed. And it's going a bit up and downhill. But it's not too strenuous. And the weather is just beautiful. There's a slight breeze hitting me. So it's like having the air conditioning on at all times. Right in front there is San Sebastian. Looks like it's probably like 10 kilometers to go, but it's all downhill. And I got this bottom bunk here. It's 8.30 a.m. on my second day of the walk. The sun is rising in the background and I have the beautiful Concha Beach here. Today I'm heading to Oreo, which is just under 20 kilometers away, which should be a quite short walk. It was a beautiful walk yesterday and today is supposed to be no less spectacular, especially with this beautiful weather. It's 16 degrees and a few cloud covers as you can see in the background. So it's just perfect walking weather. It's around noon. I've been walking for around just over three hours and I'm just outside of Oreo. The place I'm going to stay today because I don't want to make it too long of a day. There's some pilgrims on the road. Um, there's sort of like 10 walking today total. It doesn't seem to be too busy. Only 787 kilometers to go. It looks like they're gonna have a good year. The wine from this region is amazing. It was easy to find a uh, albergue. There was one right on the Camino. And now I'm just exploring. As you can see, it's very pretty, but it's a very tiny little section of the town that's old.
So it's 7.30 on day three. I'm just leaving Oreo. This is a beautiful section of Oreo. There's a little old part of Oreo. And today I'm not quite sure where I'm heading because it looks like there are not so many albergues that are open. the way from Zanauts to Deba, which is right next to the main road, but it's kind of nice you've got the beautiful seas. It's beautiful here. It's so green and then in a little while I'm going to be out by the ocean once again. I've been calling around because that's what you have to do right now is book ahead. Because it's August, most of the Alpac is a full. Again, the weather looks amazing. When I say, I can't get to the rock. No, okay, I can't. I'm just leaving Zumaya heading towards Deva and then I'm not quite sure because of the elbow situation but it's absolutely stunning coastline. It's a bit of a climb out of Zumaya but it's well worth it. I'm taking up an alternative route than the regular Camino um, as it goes along the coast. And I found a place where I'm going today. My hike today is going to be like 30 something kilometers, which isn't too bad because I'm already close to halfway there. I think I've done around 12. That's not quite halfway there, but still, it's beautiful, beautiful here. In a little while, I'm going to be out by the ocean once again. And today I'm wearing my boots. I'm going between boots and my trail runners. Yesterday I used my sneakers all day and in the evening I started to get some shin hurting. These boots have really good insoles. just leaving Deba and it's a bit of a pity because this is where I wanted to stay actually right in the back there at the albergue but all the albergues here were sold out every single hotel in Deba was sold out because there's so few alternatives and luckily I found a place that I'm gonna carry on so it's a bit of a long day but that's what happens This hike out here is beautiful. Going steep uphill and then downhill. And with a bit of luck, I will be staying at a monastery tonight, which should be really nice for a change. Thankfully, I got that albergue yesterday because they didn't answer the phone 
And when I sent them an email, they said it was full. And it's becoming a nice morning, but it's still quite foggy, as you can see. You can just make out the cows there in the distance. But it's been a really pretty walk. And there are a few pilgrims on the road. I've had four or five pass me because I'm on a bit slower pace and I'm in no rush to get back on our way down the hill in a nice and easy way, the way I like it. Because if it goes too steep, it becomes actually more difficult. Sun has finally broken through the fog and clouds and the temperature is still a very pleasant, probably like 18 degrees on the final downhill to Makina through a little pine forest. And I'm gonna hopefully stay in Makina if I can find a place. If not, I'm gonna carry on another eight kilometers to a monastery that definitely has space. Another beautiful little town by the looks of it. That is a little pension I'm staying in, right next to the church, right on the main road. In Spain, pensiones, hotels are all different. You can never really tell to actually see the place what you're going to get. And I wasn't expecting anything very fancy, but this is my bedroom. And even though my bedroom isn't very fancy, a TV big bed, it's got a bathroom attached to it with a washing machine, which is fancy. And then, as we move down here, I have a giant living room situation happening and a whole kitchen. Quarter past nine, I'm just leaving Makina. Today I'm heading towards Gernika, which is about 29 kilometers away. But I'm gonna be staying in Bilbao because it's so difficult to find places to stay. After I get to Gernika, jump on the train, go to Bilbao, and then take a train back after tomorrow to Gernika and keep on walking. Finding water along the Camino usually is not a problem, but it's important to read the little sign. Normally it says tratada or non tratada, and if it's got an X to it, it means it's not good for human consumption. The beautiful little houses along this path this morning. It does get a bit hot after, say, around one o'clock, but otherwise it's just been absolutely perfect. I'd never expected this good of a weather in August. It's a quick visit to the monastery where I actually wanted to stay last night and it would have been a beautiful, beautiful place to stay. But if you get the chance, I'd highly recommend to stay up there. Beautiful location, beautiful architecture, and it's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site.
I just had a quick lunch in Multibar just down the hill. Beautiful little town. Had a nice salad, which was a nice break from the regular bocadillos or whatever. And last night I had an amazing dinner, so I'm not going to complain. But the food is really good. Albergues available in Guernica, so I booked an albergue in Bilbao, and then I will take the train back tomorrow in the morning to Guernica and keep on walking back to Bilbao. super early at 6.15 and now I'm jumping onto the train and heading back out to Guernica. The hike back, it's a 17 or 18 kilometer hike so it should be easy and all I'm taking today is a, a little day pack. It should be a great, great day. Once again, the weather looks amazing. So I'm just heading out of Genica, found the Camino again, and now we're walking through the sort of outskirts of Genica. But the town itself is very pretty. There's a little plaza and the schools and stuff. But Genica is famous for the Picasso painting hanging in the Prado Museum in Madrid, and it's one of the most visited paintings in Spain. It's been going between Path, Sand Road, and now Tarmac today. So it's a bit of a varied terrain, but it's still an easy climb most of the way in easy downhill stretches. And it's been a long stretch without any services whatsoever, except for one little albergue. There's been literally nothing, except for a few houses. And here's a be very beautiful house coming up. All in all, there have been very few pilgrims on the road so far. Today I've only seen five pilgrims total. Two of them are walking in front of me right now. Seeing it's like the end of August, it's the 30th of August. Tomorrow is the 31st. And I think after tomorrow, most Spaniards start to work again. It should make it a bit easier now that the Spanish holidays are over to get rooms and albergues and so forth. I had a quick lunch and a coffee. I'm just outside of La Rabrezzo and about 12 kilometers from Bilbao. And I hope that I will be in Bilbao in two or three hours. This final stretch into Bilbao is definitely not the prettiest part of the Camino. It's one of these industrial areas that most every city and town in Spain have. Well, this one's quite tidy. Now we're going uphill and then a final descent into Bilbao. I think it's like eight kilometers left. So I finally made it into Bilbao. It's 36 point something kilometers. Just came through this nice big park straight ahead. It's just the Casco Viejo. And then I'm gonna head straight to my hotel. I'm gonna give you a bit of a tour while I go there.
it's my off day but I decided to get myself a bicycle and ride around so I'm cycling from Bilbao out to Portugalete and on the way I've been thinking maybe if I cycle out tomorrow I don't have to walk this route I can just continue from Portugalete take the metro out to Portugalete but I'll see in the morning how I feel about that I'm just cycling back from Portugalete, back to Bilbao, but I'm on the other side of the river right now, which is the other alternativo. This side here is a bit more clean and modern, and it's actually it definitely would be a nicer walk, I would say. I am at the train station and I decided to go to Portugalete via train this morning because I'd cycled out there yesterday and I cycled back so I've done it under my own power and also because it's raining out today. We have once again outside but we have something very special today which is this. I wish we're in some parts of the Camino. Very slippery though. Um, now on the stretch out over the highways and it's kind of a bicycle path walking path which is a very nice surface but not very scenic and finally we're back on a nice sort of country road instead of being right next to the highway the highway is actually just down there but it's pretty walk the weather's been changing in and out going from sunny to rainy to drizzly so I took off my poncho took off my boots because I had the boots on because of in case it was going to rain and it looks like it's opening up again so it's a very nice day not too hot as usual just the perfect weather there goes a cyclist from Portugalete to the arena beach it's all this little cycle walk path I do like natural surfaces but this way you can make up a lot of kilometers very easily. And we're back out to a beautiful view of the bay and the beach and a very nice walkway. Stunning coastline here. Yeah. I'm just out at Anton and it's been about 19 kilometers. But it's been very easy walk because it's all been on great surface and very very flat except for the one little stretch up some stairs it's been flat as can be and very good surface so here at this point we're leaving basque country and entering cantabria I am just leaving the albergue, the Tucamino albergue here in Onton. Beautiful little village where I arrived last night and it was a really good albergue experience once again. Uh, lots of people, probably like 18 pilgrims from all around the world. I'm not quite sure again where I'm going to go today because Laredo is about 40 kilometers away which the hospitalera recommended. I'm just walking through Mionio and then all of a sudden I noticed that I wasn't seeing any arrows and I checked the Buen Camino app and yep, I was past the bend off point. One kilometer long tunnel going through the mountains here. It's really cool, it must have been an old train track or something. 
just walking through Castro Urbiales. Beautiful town, as you can see in the background. Beautiful old Victorian buildings. But I'm carrying on because my walk today is going to be quite long. This is the old center, the fort in the background. The absolutely stunning thing. I'm going to find my Camino markers again. Really nice to be off the pavement. But this is actually the first stretch of the Camino in about a day and a half that isn't paved. The last hour or so, the last six or seven kilometers, even though I've done over 30, I'm re-energized because it's just so beautiful. Kind of reminds me of Iceland. Absolutely breathtaking. And there, just beyond lies Laredo, my final stop for today. Just finding my way down to the albergue. It's 8.15, I just had my coffee and I'm walking out following the little Camino signs. The monastery was really, really nice. Weather is a bit cloudy, but not very hot, which is nice. About one hour walk to Ferry, which lands on the beach and then you come over to Santonia. The Camino splits into two variants, one on the coast and one inland. And supposedly the inland one is less hilly, but I'm gonna go on the coast first and then cut in. Just came in from the coast, over to the big hills there, and now it's pretty much open country. I'm using my umbrella because I don't know what happened to my hat. I'm on the road to Guemes, and after yesterday's 40, I feel I can take a break. Just coming into Guemes, walking down to the albergue, had a wonderful meal of black rice. It was really delicious, and I actually had ask about a room they said yes they had a room and then all the time I ate my food they had given away my room so it's not a big deal I get to stay in the albergue and it's actually a sort of a landmark on the Camino del Norte this evening they're gonna have a little talk and so forth so it should be very very interesting and everything is donation based which is very nice for a change It's just after 7.30 a.m. It's a beautiful, foggy morning. A wonderful alberg, very nice fellow. He gives a little speech in the evening and gives you some tips. And one of the tips he gave today was to take the coastal road because it's only four kilometers longer. And when you're walking 10 kilometers, it really doesn't matter much. Down there is Santander, but it's a very nice, crisp and clean morning.
I'm just leaving Santander. I just left the hostel. It's like 7.45, something like that. Today, I'm probably heading to Santillana del Mar, which is 37 kilometers away. So it's going to be a longish walk. Pretty buildings. Old buildings, like this one here. So you're just outside of Santander in Peña Castillo. And this is where I'm going to take a quick detour to go to Decathlon to get myself a new hat because it's only two blocks away and they have a whole bunch of hiking hats and stuff like that. And I got myself a new hat to replace the one I had lost. They literally have anything you need for hiking, camping, etc. This road where the Decathlon is on actually joins up with the Camino again. So it's not a big detour at all across the train tracks. A fascinating area because it's all like old school type of industry. Final stretch is going uphill and in about a kilometer or two I'll be in Santillana. Finally made it into Santillana del Mar, and even though it's Del Mar, which is of the sea, it's not by the sea. It's, it's supposed to be one of the prettiest towns in Spain, actually. So we'll see about that. Here is my fancy hotel. Kind of a nice hotel. And I'm leaving Santillana del Mar. Beautiful, beautiful little town. In the background, the sun is rising. Today I'm heading to Pomillas, which is about 20 kilometers away. And it's down on the beach. So it should be pretty easy. So yes, 37 degrees centigrade. And I work 37 kilometers. So it's, it's quite a stretch, long stretch to walk. But the weather is absolutely stunning, perfect temperature, bit of traffic on this road, but otherwise very nice. Just walking through Orenia, hoping to find a coffee. So we've had one coffee so far this morning. And it usually takes about two for me to wake up. I'm about 12 kilometers from Comillas right now, halfway between Santillana and Comillas. The weather is good as long as you're out of the sun itself, because as soon as you're in the sun, it gets blastingly hot again. It should be another two, two and a half hours till I reach Comillas, and hopefully there's an albergue there. There's a very nice albergue, and if it weren't so early, I would stay. a stroll around Comillas after a nice shower and I must say it is very impressive. It's got tons of amazing architecture and it also has a fantastic beach to which I'm heading right now. I'm just leaving my albergue here on the pension actually in Comillas. I had a room to myself and a little balcony and my own private clothesline. But Comillas is a very pretty little town. Looking for the Camino sign, which I think I saw yesterday down here somewhere. Just making sure I don't miss it because I just saw one back there beyond the church. It's 8.15. The weather is a bit cloudy, but not 
very hot, which is nice. So it should be a nice, pleasant walk today. 20 something kilometers. Um, I'm not sure if it's going uphill or downhill. They have amazingly beautiful houses everywhere. And above on the hill, you have that massive university that covers a whole hill. Um, it's about to start to drizzle, but I'm not going to put on my poncho quite yet. It actually starts to rain. There was a sign saying to watch a step before because the pavement it is very wavy and it is kind of tricky to walk on. So watch a step. This cow is a pretty good spot. There. About there where my pole is, is Comillas. And looking to the other side, you can already see the mountain starting to form. Really beautiful with the clouds in the morning. And back to San Vicente, lots and lots of cows. We finally made it off the asphalt and pavement and now the Camino is going next to the train tracks here, sort of a little pathway. But I'm about five or six kilometers from my final destination and hopefully the albergue has some space for me tonight. Back on the main road. Crossing this bridge here <laughs> is Cantabria and on this side is Asturias. So there's a bit of a climb. And it's kind of a fancy Camino. And I think my Alberga is just a Ponte. It's 7.15 a.m. and today, for some reason, I got a really early start, even though I only have like 20 kilometers. I'm going to take the coastal route to Yanis. I'm just leaving Columbus. Had a very nice hostel or albergue. And it's a beautiful town, actually, Columbus. It's very unexpected. It's right on top of a hill, right at the entrance of Asturias. So now we're walking through Asturias, not through Cantabria anymore. And we're going to head down to the coast and then I'm going to take some of the alternative routes that are supposed to be really, really beautiful. It's still beautiful as can be. So I've got a bit of a limp today. I got a blister, my first blister. And yesterday, curiously enough, it was the sneakers that got me because I had put in my insoles from the boots into the sneakers because they're very good insoles. And that tiny little shift, that tiny extra millimeter um, cost me, cost me a blister. But blisters aren't that, as bad as long as you take care of them. You really have to watch out where you're going, but it's just so much better to be back on a trail, a real trail again, not on the road.
a really pretty little village coming through with a bunch of albergues that it's very, very quaint. Very, very Penduelis was really, really beautiful. And if it weren't so early, if it weren't 12 o'clock, I probably would have stayed there because they have some really nice restaurants and it looked really beautiful and peaceful. It'd be a nice place to make a stop if I just get there a bit later. So I'm carrying on another four kilometers or so to Yanis and then I'm going to stop there. Arrived in Yanis. Well, it looks like a very nice place. It was quite a long walk though, longer than expected. And I'm leaving Yanis. Uh, the albergo is really good. Sadly, the people next to me snored like crazy they're actually right in front of me there were two other people in my room and they both snored but today i plan on walking like 19 kilometers wherever that will leave me and it looked like there was an albergue like 19 kilometers away so hopefully i can make that but it's a weekend again and things are full up there's not a single cloud in the sky it's just got a slight chill right now so it feels like it's going to be a good walking day. Isn't it? And I'm taking a bit of an alternative route that goes to the sea once again. And the smell of the sea from the seaweed that they're using as fertilizer is just amazing. The one thing I really love about the Camino is that you never know what's around the next bend. Amazing scenery. I'm just about at the albergue and it's been like 28 kilometers, I think. I had a great night's sleep, a great little albergue, very, very well run, very nice pilgrims, and it was donativo. You just leave whatever you think it was worth, but they had a good breakfast, everything was fantastic. So I'm very motivated to be walking all the way to Villa Viciosa, which is like close to 30 something kilometers from where I will be probably starting the Camino Primitivo.
just walking through Colunga and just had a coffee but it's a pretty little town that's Colungas and it is the halfway point of the Camino del Norte so today I'm going to have to decide if I am going to carry on on the Camino del Norte or if I'm going to take the Camino Primitivo the Camino del Norte is a lot of asphalt and what I've had for the last six or seven days or ever since Santander has been a lot of asphalt and it's very tiring to walk on asphalt not only because your feet get tired but because it's not exactly what you expect from the Camino and the Camino Primitivo is supposed to be over 60 percent of Camino not asphalt road. What I think I'm going to do is go down the Camino Primitivo because it's supposed to be the perfect time of the year to do that and then I will come back and then carry on the Camino del Norte. All the way in the background is the Ria, and we're on, I guess, what is the last slope into Via Viciosa. And for the last half an hour or so, it's been pouring down. So I finally get to wear my fancy poncho that I only got to wear once for like 10 minutes. And when I was about to put it on, I was doubting if I should put it on or not, but I'm glad I did because it actually did pour down quite a bit. They're very famous for their apples and the apple cider. As usual, it's one of those towns that has kind of ugly buildings and then a nice little historic center. There's my little hotel for tonight. Beautiful area. Another beautiful hotel, which I nearly stayed in that one. But this one was cheaper. It's a cloudy day, and I'm still in VF walking to the post office to drop off a few more things that I really don't need and that just take up space. So it's around 9 o'clock. And the Camino actually goes right in front there down the road, but I've been down that road already. So I'm taking a bit of a shortcut down this road we end up at the Camino again. I actually just bent off, but thankfully I saw the arrows again. But I'm not going very far today. I'm only going like 20 kilometers to Peon. I am where it points off to Oviedo and Gijon, heading towards Peon, which is about halfway to Gijon. But there's a beautiful little church with a slight surprise in it. They've got a sail and they've got this strange dude. Beautiful valley here. Down there is Peon. Because there weren't many albergues around here, they actually picked you up and then dropped you back off. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. and I'm just leaving Peon. It's a nice little valley here, beautiful valley. And the albergue was really, really good. They actually picked you up at some point drove you to the albergue and then dropped you back off. But it was well worth it because there weren't many albergues around here and it was a very nice albergue. So the first stretch here is straight uphill, then downhill into Gijon. And from Gijon, I'm going to take the train to Oviedo and then start the Camino Comitivo so that I get off 
this asphalt. We're almost at the top. And I'm thinking that at the top we should be able to see Gijon already. And back on the asphalt. I think it's around another eight or nine kilometers. And way down there, straight at the end of this road, is Gijon. Um, it just started to rain a few minutes ago. Just made it into Gijon. I'm standing underneath the bridge, right by the river. And I'm walking around uh, towards the beach, and then along the beach, then to the train station. But it was an easy walk here from Peon. And one of the locals told me to take this way instead of the officially marked Camino. It, it is quite miserable, as you can see. My feet are very wet. But the rest of my body is kind of warm. I'm bending up here. Just crossing over to the train station. I'm just walking out of Gijon, and the weather is very different than the day I walked into Gijon. It's quite chilly, actually, and it's also about two weeks later, because I went down the Camino Primitivo. I was getting bored with walking on the asphalt that much, so I walked all the way to Santiago, and it was fantastic. But the walk to Aviles today is 25 kilometers, so it shouldn't be all too bad. So I made it out of Gijon. They warned me not to go this way and to take the train. Either they didn't do it or they really hate industrial areas, but I don't think it's that bad. There was massive confusion with the arrows because there were arrows, there were crossed out arrows, all kinds of things. But it was by far the sketchiest Camino signposting and crossing I've seen so far. And now it's we're walking next to the road with giant trucks zooming past. So it's not the nicest, but I think it's only like a kilometer or two till we're in Aviles, which should be pretty. It's 8.15, it's already light outside, and I'm just walking through the streets of Aviles, which are really, really pretty. There's a beautiful park behind me here, which I actually didn't go in because I went to the Centro Niedermeyer yesterday. It's a big modern center designed by the Brazilian architect. But I'm walking today to Muros, which is only 20 kilometers away. It's a bit drizzly, but quite warm. Looks like the weather is getting warmer today. It should go up to 20 degrees, I say. But um, we'll see how the walk goes. It's probably again a lot of pavement. Boy, no space to walk in. Finally made it off the main road and the zero walkway. Kind of a strange day today. So it's been one of those days where everything is just back and forth, back and forth. It's been off and on raining. So I have my poncho hanging on the back so I can put it on. It's the same with the Camino. We're on a little dirt road now, and then it becomes asphalted road. It hasn't been the prettiest 
walk, making up some good time. And I should be in Mura in about an hour. Got a nice late start today out of Muro de Leon. Today it's a very short walk, so that's why I started out very late. Also because I got a nice long sleep in because I only had two other people in a giant room. But the weather here is absolutely stunning. And what you can see up in the sky above me is a lot of calm trails from all the planes, mostly going to Portugal. Because I have an app on my phone that tells me exactly where the planes are going. Just beyond there is Sotorunya. I think it's another two kilometers. Just up front there, instead of split, where you go to the coastal route, the alternative or the inland route, and I'm going to take the coastal route. The little house is a train station, but it's also the albergue where I'm staying tonight. And then let's just go mm -hmm. and show you. They have a beautiful little kitchen area. They have some food that you can just leave some money for if you want to cook and they also have a dinner and they're the bunk beds and normally in the albergues you get a bunk bed but you will not get a duvet and you will not get real sheets and here they're giving you real sheets they've got a nice shower um, you get your locker and there are one two three four five six seven eight beds in this and then here's some more bathrooms. And as you can see, everything's very tastefully done. I'm just leaving the albergue in Navellana. As you can see, it's right next to the train tracks. It's a super great experience. Not only because it's next to the train tracks and an old train station, but because they really had great facilities, great food, and a great, great breakfast. Today, I'm going to try to walk 30 kilometers to Luarca, which is supposed to be another really beautiful town. I'm on the Camino de Costa, which is the coastal route, and that's how you get to this wonderful alberg.
pretty stunning town. Well, there's this pretty stunning entrance into it. zigzagging my way down of Luarca, but it's a pretty fascinating town. You can see the rail line go along, and on top of the hill, there's a little chapel overlook. For now, it's a steep climb uphill. I like these morning exercises, they get you going. Very few signs pointing the actual direction out of Luarca, so I followed the indications on the app. I'm going to hope to make 30 kilometers because I want to be in Rivera tomorrow and then it will only be 20 more kilometers so I can get there early. I must say, so far I've been extremely lucky with the weather. It's just been absolutely gorgeous weather pretty much every single day. And one of the changes I'm starting to see is the difference in the Oreos. Because these are the Galician style already, but the Asturian ones are the square ones. Like actually, there you got a perfect example. Up there is an Asturian Oreo, or because it's a bigger one, it's called a Panera. Let me just get a better shot of it. This looks like a real pretty little town we're going through, and they have a cafe. But I'm just walking into Navia and I think I'm going to call it quits today. I was going to go the 30 kilometers, but I'm kind of a bit worn out um, because I haven't been feeling so well and I haven't been eating that well. So I might just call it a day here and then really get my energies together so I can do the 30k tomorrow. It was a really nice stay. Breakfast was outstanding. And today I'm walking to Riba del El, which is 30 kilometers. Um, right next to the river here. Should be re-energized because for the last few days I didn't eat all too much. Hopefully it won't get too hot. But it's been really, really nice to be totally relaxed. I didn't do much yesterday at all other than go for lunch. So there's a junction again, 
where you can go the regular Camino or sort of the coastal route and I'm going to take the coastal route towards Tapia. Banana. It's around another 10 kilometers till I arrive in Rio de Janeiro, but I'm not quite sure. This is Tapia. The yeah, Albergue here is in a beautiful location, right on this beautiful beach. Finally leaving Asturias and getting into Galicia. Across the river here is a beautiful little town of Ribadeo. And that's my final stop for today. You can see it's a really long bridge. It's been like 33 kilometers. But it's been an interesting 33 kilometers, even though road and asphalt, it changed a lot. As you can see, I'm not quite awake this morning. It's 9 a.m., a very late start. I slept in till 8 because I was staying in a private room in a little hotel on the main square. It's about a 27 kilometer walk today to Lorenza. So it's a bit shorter than yesterday. Actually, yesterday was way longer than expected. I think I ended up walking like 36 kilometers or something like that. The alternative route takes you along the coast. I'm not 100% sure it was worth the extra hour or so. walked by a mile marker and I forgot that I'm in Galicia so now I can know exactly how many kilometers I have left to go because elsewhere they don't really mark the distance every now and then you'll see a sign telling you but here in Galicia they mark them exactly so I've got 187 kilometers left from this point which isn't too bad Ribadeo, where I left this morning, is the point along the coast where you turn inland. So from now on, everything is inland towards Santiago. There's going to be no more coastline along the walk. I just want to show you how serious they are about their markers in Galicia. Here's one. And then, just down there, probably like less than 100, 200 feet, is another one. And they always have the updated mileage mark on the top. My head here is Lorenza. I stopped for the day. Been 27 or 28 kilometers. Nice easy walk actually. And I've been looking for a place to stay for the last 15-20 minutes because right around the corner here is the albergue municipal but they're closed so i went to another albergue and a big giant albergue that had 
40 or 50 places and they're closed too. So I went back to the first alberg I saw and they were full. So the thing is I have to walk another eight kilometers, which isn't all too bad. I finally got an early start again. As you can see, the sky is just changing. Uh, Mondanillo is actually a very nice town and it's where the route separates. So I'm going to double check. There are quite a few places now where the route is splitting. The Camino splits into different sections. So I always need to be pretty aware where I'm going. Today should be around 30, 33. I'm not 100% sure. It's been a long and steady climb up this hill and each time you come to what you think is the top you see it go even further up ahead of me. I think that's the last hill because it has a windmill on top that is turning. But it's in a nice long walk, I mean climb better said, up this hill probably like one or two kilometers so far. Windmills all around, as far as you can see, and then down there somewhere is where I came from. Finally, headed over the summit, but it looks very pretty. Pretty easy going terrain ahead with slight ups and downs. getting a super early start this morning. It's 7.30. I'm still in Villalba. This is the main little square. There's a church and the Torre. And then behind me, is a, that's the Parador Nacional, the fanciest hotel in town. Actually, where I had dinner last night. It was really good. The reason I'm so early is because we had some jerk get up at 6 a.m. or well, set his alarm and then he got up, woke everybody up. And there was another nice guy in there in the dorm snoring his head off a big German guy who got drunk and then just snored all night long. No matter what we did, he would not shut up. But today I'm not walking too far, 26 miles. And today after Belmonte, the Camino splits. So I'll have to figure out exactly where I'm going. The one thing I always do every morning is double check on the app where the Camino is because if you don't see that sign, you're on the wrong way. Once early in the morning, I left and followed the wrong arrow. And about 20 minutes later, I noticed that I was followed an advertisement arrow. Beautiful audio and a beautiful little house. Really, really pretty. Ooh. 
slowly but surely the fog's lifting. Or the morning mist, whatever it is. Still a bit misty. And we're back on a tar road. And there's one pilgrim ahead. I've seen three pilgrims today. As you can see, everything is very tastefully done and very, very clean. A bit outside of town, but they have literally everything here. It's probably one of the nicest uh, albergues I've been in. Just leaving my albergue. It's yeah. been a very nice thing. I had the whole dorm to myself today because it wasn't very busy. Some people cancelled, and that place is brand new, so it was absolutely fantastic. Unlike the night before, where I had snoring people, nobody snoring, just myself. Today it's about 26 or 28 kilometers. And then tomorrow it's another 20 or so towards Arswa. Yesterday we sort of cut off about 10 kilometers at some point by taking this route. Just doing a hill up on a hill. That's where you'll be walking to. It's warm enough basically to be walking in a t-shirt. I have about eight kilometers left. There's a, another bend off coming that I'm not, not allowed to miss at Asklusas. And then it's on towards my hotel for the night. And I actually booked a hotel tonight because I'm pretty much done because tomorrow I hit Arsua and then from Arsua it's Santiago's the next stop. Only 69 kilometers left. I'm just leaving Sobrada. In the background there is the monastery. The monastery actually also is an albergue, but it is closed. So I stayed in a hotel, very comfortable hotel. And today the walk is to Ansua, which will be the next stop, which is only 21 kilometers. So it's going to be a very short walk. enjoying a quick snack bananas bananas are perfect food for when you're hiking and don't want to stop to eat a 
this is the last hill before Altsua. Finally made it to Altsua and we're just about at the point where the Camino del Norte joins with the Camino Frances. And I remember from the Camino Frances was when I worked from Altsua to Opedruso. It seemed like a very short day and it's kind of like a wasted day. So my plan is to walk from Arsua the whole stretch to Santiago, which is only about 35 kilometers. So it's not too bad and easily doable. Normally I am one of the last to leave the alberga. Today I was the first. And it's a very different attitude. And you can see the way people are walking and stuff that they've just started in Sarria, which is the closest point from Santiago that you can still get your credential that says you've walked the Camino de Santiago. Distance here we have Arthur on the road coming up. This is a final sort of stretch before Open the Dusa. I just had a quick snack break and I'm now 15 kilometers from Santiago three hours left of the Camino. It's been really a strange day. It wasn't supposed to rain, according to the weather forecast, and it's been raining, drizzling, and everything in between, and now it's sort of sunny. The end of my walk here through the streets towards the cathedral. It's um, such a beautiful city. It's always a pleasure to come back. And even though I've done this before, I'm still really, really excited. It was a spectacular journey. If you like the video, please subscribe down below and hit the like button below. And if you want to see my other Camino videos, there are some here for you to watch.